I mean, when you have the majority in the House, as Republicans do, and you elect the speaker who determines what we vote on, what bills actually come to the floor, including whether or not they're going to vote on bills to actually get out of this shutdown, then it really is dependent on them. That's where we are right now. And uh, I thought your analysis of what's going on with, with Speaker McCarthy is, 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 is pretty accurate. You know, he could un- understand this. He could tell these extremists in his party, you know what, for the first time, I'm not going to listen to you. I'm not going to listen to you. I'm going to do the right thing for the country by bringing a compromise bill to the floor that both Republicans and Democrats can vote for to get us out of this mess. The same compromise bill that's already passed the Senate with both Democratic and Republican votes and will do the right thing for the country. But he's not going to do the right thing for the country. He's going to do the right thing for himself to keep the gavel as speaker by putting us into a shutdown. The speaker says now that the border is the issue. It's interesting how the storyline has evolved over this course of time. He says that he needs to meet with Joe Biden and that if Joe Biden wants to keep the government open, he needs to shut down the border. Uh, how how frequently are we going to hear the storyline change as we get closer to midnight on Saturday? I have a wild guess, maybe twice a day with this character. Speaking is that how McCarthy, you feel though? I mean, are, are you getting these yes. signals from the speaker's office? <clears throat> speaker McCarthy is completely out of control of his own conference of his own Republican majority. And so what he's trying to do is come up with a different excuse, a different reason why this hasn't happened to justify his continued effort to try to find some compromise that the extremists have already said they're not willing to accept. He's trying to drag it out by changing the story, by saying, well, now I need to meet with the president over this. Now I need to meet uh, with who knows, maybe he'll say he needs to meet with 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 one of the secretaries over that. He's just Mm -hmm. trying to drag this out to save his position. I've heard a couple of things over the past uh, couple of days. You can tell me if they are true. Jim Clyburn, the congressman from South Carolina, told us uh, yesterday here on Bloomberg that if Speaker McCarthy decided to work with Hakeem Jeffries, that, that, that your Democratic leader in the House would just have to say the word. You guys would back a continuing resolution that is moving its way through the Senate or find votes to, to come up with your own in the House. Uh, we also heard... Uh, from another lawmaker who was with us yesterday who said Speaker McCarthy uh, could pick up the phone right now and get this done if he simply engaged with Hakeem Jeffries. Is that true that Democrats are actually standing by to help him solve this, even if this goes to a motion to vacate? Matt Gates is still threatening to fire the Speaker. Democrats could also be there to help him get through that. Is this a matter of simply reaching across the aisle? Your party is ready to help? Yes. Yes, it is. That's a simple answer. Yes. Now, let's pull it apart a little bit. In terms of actually funding uh, the government, uh, not only is what Jim Clyburn said true, but it's the way that these problems have always come to an end. When Republicans control the House, they've shut down the government before, and it's always been Democrats who bail them out, who join together with moderate Republicans, reasonable Republicans, to support a compromise bill, just like the one that has already passed the Senate this week, to get us out of this mess. So not only are Democrats standing here today, myself included, ready and willing to help, to work together, to do the right thing for the country, but that's what we've always done in the past when Republicans put us in this situation. It's only Republicans who threaten to shut down the government like this, and it's always Democrats who give the Republican majority the votes that they need to get out of it. Now, on the second question, the second question is more interesting because this would be uh, Mm. largely unprecedented for a Republican speaker who got elected just with Republican votes to say the only way I can keep my job is to get Democrats to help support me. Right. And if, if McCarthy wants to do that, Democrats are open to the conversation. But we're not just going to support him and his extremist agenda. We're not just going to say, go back to being speaker with the help of our votes and continue being subservient to these dangerous extremists in your party. What Speaker McCarthy would have to do is make a genuine deal with Democrats and say, no, I'm, I'm going to stop listening to the extremists. I'm actually going to govern from the center. 
I'm going to work to get things through the House in a bipartisan manner rather than continuing to make bills more and more extreme to f- satisfy these crazy members on the far right. Now, that would make Speaker McCarthy a truly historic speaker. He could fund the government. He could lead us through the rest of his term as speaker by doing a lot of good things, bipartisan things for the country. And Speaker McCarthy would even gain the one thing that he doesn't have, which is a good reputation. Sadly, I just don't know that he has the political courage or the wherewithal to actually do all of that. Is that message being delivered? It must be to him. It is. Absolutely. He he understands this loud and clear. And there were even some people at the very beginning who knew Speaker McCarthy a lot longer than I have, uh, even back in his days in the California legislature, and have said he's fundamentally, or at least historically, a, a more moderate, reasonable person. He's always been pretty transactional, you know, and not, not a not a transformative leader, not the most principled person on earth, but someone who's willing to work to get things done. But that's not the kind of speaker that he's been. He's been a speaker who's just trying to hold on to his job for dear life by doing whatever these extremists, these you know, people like Matt Gates, uh, ask of him. We're spending time with Congressman Seth Moulton. The Democrat from Massachusetts, of course, has taken a strong stand against the blockade of military promotions uh, that's still in place by Senator Tommy Tuberville, a Republican from Alabama, joined us yesterday here on Bloomberg to talk about it. Congressman, I don't want to waste your time with a lot of sound bites, but it's important you hear what he said because it's been echoing around the Capitol ever since. I specifically asked him about his decision to vote against the confirmation of the new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, C.Q. Brown. Of course, that vote went to the floor of the Senate because of his blockade. And that's an important appointment. If you're not familiar with uh, General Brown, he's an African-American and obviously the most powerful position here in the United States military. And I asked Senator Tuberville why he voted against the now chairman of the Joint Chiefs, who he has suggested is, quote unquote, woke. Here is what he said. I think he'll do a good job, but I heard him say a few things that, that really didn't fit with me in terms of making our military better and better. you got to remember, you know, we have a free what country. What was it, though, specifically, Senator? Well, we have a free country. We have things that, that we need to do to make sure that, that, that we can uphold, and we can't do that without a great, hard, strong military. Now, uh, I heard mm-hmm. some things that he talked about, about race and things that he wanted to mix into the military. Let me tell you something. Our military is not an equal opportunity employer. We're looking for the best of best. I did uh, press him a bit on that, Congressman, to put a finer point on what he means by race mixing into the military. I think he means uh, diversity programs. You don't have to talk about Senator Tuberville, but I wondered if you could reflect on what you know about the chairman of the Joint Chiefs, General C.Q. Brown. Chairman C.Q. Brown is one of the most impressive military officers of his generation. I personally wrote a letter to the President of the United States recommending him for this job because I've been so impressed by him. And by the way, I've been impressed by him in the midst of a lot of other incredibly impressive officers, like the the former Commandant of the Marine Corps, David Berger, who has pioneered uh, Force Design 2030, the modernization of of the Marine Corps to meet the China threat that's led all the other services Um, Now, he actually worked very closely with uh, General Brown of the Air Force um, and and have have advocated for these modernization efforts uh, together. But these are some of the best military officers that I've ever seen. And I think C.Q. Brown is truly the best of the best. And I say that as a United States Marine veteran with four combat tours in Iraq. You just played audio from a senator from Alabama who was once a football coach, apparently knows a bit about football, but does not know anything about serving in the military. He's never served himself. He's never made any sorts of sacrifices like that in his life. He doesn't understand the troops. He certainly doesn't understand what they go through. And he obviously doesn't understand what it takes to make the best military fighting force on earth, which fundamentally is equal opportunity. Because if we are going to get the best of the best, then we have to have an organization that gives equal opportunity to all applicants. 
if you didn't have that, then you would immediately be saying, nope, this segment of the population, they don't have the same opportunity to join the military. So if there are great women out there or there are great black Americans or whatever group this senator doesn't like, well, need not apply. We're not going to benefit from your talent in the United States military, and that will make the military a weaker force. So to me, this senator is very soft on national security. He's very weak on patriotism. And, you know, maybe we're not supposed to say this, but he sounds like a racist to me. Hard to imagine this guy from Alabama being a racist, but that's certainly what it sounds like to this Marine.